Now to the latest findings in a David Hammer investigation. But when you have multiple complaints of the same type of behavior and you choose to ignore it and you choose to protect a perpetrator, shame on you. A former airman comes forward with evidence that the Catholic Church covered up his sexual abuse claim against an Air Force chaplain. Our David Hammer investigation found the Archdiocese for the Military Services appeared to hide a sexual assault claim against former New Orleans priest Brian Highfill. And just two weeks ago, another new development that stops a criminal investigation of Highfill and its tracks. In 2020, our Losing Faith investigation uncovered sexual abuse complaints dating back almost two decades against Father Brian Highfill, a priest ordained in New Orleans who went on to a long career as an Air Force chaplain. Archbishop Gregory Amon said several of those complaints never made it into Highfill's personnel file. To be very honest, it, it, it angers me that we didn't have the information that we needed because this whole process would have been much simpler for us. And quicker. And quicker. Amond was missing at least three previously documented complaints against Highfill when Mike Brandner Sr. came to the Archdiocese of New Orleans in August 2018. He turned over stacks of love letters Highfill had sent his little brother Scott. Years later, Scott committed suicide. Amon said the letters alone weren't enough to establish sexual abuse, but they did prompt him to look into Highfill's record in the Air Force. Amon sent a letter to the Archbishop of the Military Services in October 2018, asking the military archdiocese if they'd received any allegations against Highfill from his time as a chaplain. And military Archbishop Timothy Brolio responded definitively, quote, there is nothing in his personnel file that would cast suspicion on his ministry while a military chaplain. Now, thanks to another alleged victim seeing our stories and coming forward, we've learned there definitely should have been something in that file. Ed Joseph lives in South Dakota. He says Heifel was his chaplain at Bitburg Air Force Base in West Germany in 1986. He alleges Heifel fed him alcohol and tried to rape him in his sleep. Early that morning, I awoke to, to him, my pants being opened, and he was trying to perform a certain act on me, similar to the airman that, that I saw that you interviewed before. Joseph went to the Air Force Inspector General on the base. And they did not even want to um, discuss it or even consider prosecuting it because they didn't want to ruin that poor man's life. Joseph said Highfill tried to demonize him and out him as gay and that led him to do what he called a foolish thing. Joseph chaperoned a group of Christian youth organization students on a trip to Rome. He said he was stuck with a huge bill for the kids' calls from the hotel back to the States, and Highfill refused to reimburse him. So Joseph took the money out of a Catholic scholarship fund and confessed what he did to Highfill. He said the chaplain broke the seal of confession and reported it to the authorities. And I did a very foolish thing that I owned. I took the money that I believe was mine from that scholarship, which in hindsight I regret because it was the, the end of it was it, it ended up being the end of my career. Joseph was court-martialed and got a bad conduct discharge. Once back in the States in 1987, he called the Archdiocese of the Military Services to try again to report Highfill for sexual assault. Again, he was rebuffed. The receptionist sounded like an elderly woman and I basically told her what I wanted. She said to me I should be ashamed of myself, that I was a pervert and that I was in a burning hell and hung up on me. There's no written record of those old complaints, but there's plenty from 2015 and 2016. Joseph was working for the VA then and he filed a military sexual trauma claim. He also exchanged dozens of emails with the military archdiocese victims assistance coordinator and vicar general, explicitly accusing Highfill of sexual assault. We confronted the Archdiocese of the Military Services with those records. A spokesman acknowledged that AMS sent the sexual assault complaint to the Air Force for investigation in October 2016. So how does AMS explain Archbishop Brolio's letter to Amon more than two years later in November 2018, stating there was nothing to report from Highfill's personnel file? The spokesman wrote, quote, 
The AMS did not receive any reports or briefings from the Air Force investigation and was not contacted to participate in any investigation. Therefore, there were no findings to note in Monsignor Highfill's personnel record. After our last story, we didn't just hear from more alleged victims, we also heard from Monsignor Gene Gamolka. He was the head of all chaplains for the U.S. Marines when he wrote about five abuse cases by Catholic chaplains alone in a three-year period from 1991 to 1994. But the Archbishop at the time, now Cardinal Edwin O'Brien, turned around and filed an official report stating there had only been two abuse cases by chaplains dating back to 1950. How can there be two cases in a 52-year period with all those thousands uh, over a period of time, the thousands of, of chaplains, only two cases of abuse? So when Gamolka saw our story about Brolio's comments on Highfill, it struck a nerve. I could not help but say, David, <laughs> You're, you're, you're right on target. I mean, you, you know, things have really not changed. The Air Force Office of Special Investigations told Joseph recently that federal prosecutors would be contacting him about pressing criminal charges against Highfill. He needs to be prosecuted and he needs to be sent to prison for what he did. But then, just last week, we delivered some news that sickened Joseph. The Archdiocese of New Orleans announced Highfield died of cancer two weeks ago at age 79. The church bulletin says, may he rest in peace. He's not gonna have eternal rest if there's such a thing, not considering what he, the crimes that he's committed, crimes against humanity, and I'm gonna just hopefully let him go and just move on. I have to, otherwise I'm gonna torture myself. That's the new challenge for Highfill's alleged victims. Their stories helped us expose a cover-up, but they'll never get to confront their tormentor. David Hammer, Eyewitness News. Well, the Air Force, Air Force Office of Special Investigations confirmed there is an active criminal investigation into Highfill, but a spokeswoman said now that Highfill is dead, the case is in the process of being closed.